On Good Friday, the reading begins with the 18th chapter of John. We read, after Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought an attachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied, I am he. This begins a truly dark night. And it's a night in which we uh, contemplate things that are hard. In general, we do not live as people who are focused on sin. Right? To follow Jesus is not to live a life of sin mitigation. It is to live a life of cultivation of holiness. To follow Jesus is not to obsess about being less bad but to be focused on ever being ever more like him, to be ever more good and humble, patient, understanding, and bold. Yet Lent, and especially Good Friday, is this moment of the year when we stop and acknowledge that there is evil in this world. The world is broken, and we share in that brokenness. To join the early Methodist groups, the requirement was simple. You had to have a desire to flee from the wrath to come. That's the quote. That's what John Wesley said. There is no wiggling around it. And for years, it rubbed me the wrong way. For John Wesley is someone who uh, taught people and led people and focused people on following Jesus, on sanctification, on grace, on receiving what God is doing and being loved and letting that love transform them and experiencing the spirit moving in people's lives. And so to talk about fleeing the wrath to come, man, just kind of seemed out of, out of character. And yet, continue to look at that, and there, seem, there is something to it. It's the start. John Wesley helped people follow Jesus. But to follow Jesus towards the good begins with fleeing from what is evil, fleeing from what is broken. To follow Jesus begins with saying, I don't want to be like that. I want to be like Jesus, and I don't want to be like that. I don't want to lapse into that way of evil, that way of ugliness, that way that is just not what I want to do. So while we are a people that is committed to journeying towards Jesus, we are also, on occasion, people who look back and are reminded of what we are fleeing from. And what we f flee from is something profoundly ugly. It is what comes into focus on the day that Jesus was crucified. And what do we see on this day? If I was to read further into John, John 18, and I would encourage you to take the time to do so this evening, what we would find is the trial, the crowd, the soldiers. Right? And it'd be easy to focus on individuals in these moments. Pilate in the middle of the trial, asking, what is truth? The, pers the people in the crowds chanting, crucify him. The soldier who with casual cruelty, a cruelty that takes practice, pierces Jesus' side to make sure that he is dead. Yet those are, yes, those are individual decisions, and the people who made them are morally responsible for them. But that's just what is easy to see. There is more going on here. It's not just Pilate asking what is truth. It is Pilate who is just following the law, just running the system, 
not being willing to answer his own question about what is truth, and then washing his hands of the situation. We know about this. We follow the law, those are just the rules, and if rules cause, rules cause people to hurt, well, there's nothing I can do about it, nothing can be done, wash our hands and move along. That's just the way it is. It's not just the complications of looking at the trial, it's also looking at the crowd. It's looking at the crowd and seeing an addiction to violence. The crowd that chants for the release of Barabbas. Right? That is what happens as we read into John. We read that they're offered the opportunity to, flee one, to free one person, Jesus or Barabbas. And they choose Barabbas because he was abandoned. Now, who was killing Roman soldiers? He was taking the fight to the Romans. Jesus isn't going to fight? Then we don't want him. We want someone who will fight. This is the myth of redemptive violence, if you want the term for it. The idea is that if the right people use violence, it'll finally, everything will finally get worked out. Except it never does. This addiction to violence. It's not just the, the systems, right? It's not just Pilate saying, those, those are just the rules, right? That's just how it has to be done. It's not just the crowd being addicted to violence and wanting to choose someone who will fight for them. Right? They've made us bleed, we've got to make them bleed. It is also the sense of superiority that has been trained into the soldier. That to be Roman, or what we now say Italian, right? that's where Rome's at, right? to be Roman is to be better than anyone else. These are not Roman citizens. and that's, Jesus was not a Roman citizen. Jesus was not a citizen under uh, Roman law, and so he, he did not have rights. And so the Roman soldiers were trained and, and trained to be able to, to look down on others. You can treat Jews as less than human because they're not Roman. And so this callousness towards others that we see in the soldiers, they're trained to treat non-Romans like obstacles, and if you just want to get on with your day, go ahead and just stab him in the side to make sure he really is dead. And so what we see in Good Friday are both the individual decisions, Pilate washing his hands, a person in the crowd chanting crucify him, an individual soldier who stabs Jesus in the side. But we also see how those individual decisions that they are morally culpable for, Right? We also, but we also see how those individual decisions, as we look closer, are part of bigger problems, bigger sins. As Paul puts it, the powers and principalities. This is what we need to be saved from. Jesus died as a result of the brokenness and the evilness of individual sin and the greater, the powers, the principalities. And this is what we need to be saved from. Saved from our own decision and saved from the powers and the systems that make those decisions the options that we have. What we see in Good Friday is not only Jesus bearing the weight of individual sin, but further bearing the weight of these systemic sins, the sins of whole world of all sin, the sin that gets interwoven into our lives. That is what Jesus dies for. That is what Jesus forgives when he says, Father, forgive them from saying that from the cross. And he knows how much we need that forgiveness. And he knows how much it will cost to offer it. This is a dark night. I would encourage you to take a moment to ponder this darkness, to read John 18, to read, read the following chapters, to understand what is at play here. The sins of individuals, and the sins that are wrapped in, wrapped in and through our lives and our communities. This is why Jesus dies.